Welcome back to Getting Started with Unreal Technology. In this video, we're going to talk to you about the importance of snapping. And we're going to be focusing primarily on translation snapping using the drag grid. Because this can really bite you if you're not making the most of your drag grid in terms of placing brushes and static meshes. So we'll begin by creating a very simple level. Let's go to File, New. And for our case, we'll just use a subtractive level for simplicity. And no, we don't want to save any changes. I'll right click over on my cube button and we'll set some dimensions. Let's go with 1024 by 1024 by 512. We'll build and close. I'll go ahead and hit the subtract button and then we'll hold down the L key and I'll click here on the floor to create a very simple light. Okay, with that, we have a nice basic room that we've created. And let's say that we want to add a corridor coming off of one of the walls. Now what I'm going to do to really drive this example home is the very first thing, we'll go to view, drag grid, and I'm going to turn off use drag grid altogether, so it's not even being used. Then let's grab our brush settings, so we'll right click on cube, and we'll set this to something like 512 by 256 by 256. Let's build and close, and now you can see the shape of the red builder brush. Let's pop into the top view to really make this apparent, and we'll go into brush wire frame mode. I'll grab the brush, and we're going to position it so that it's lined up with our wall like so. So you can see that uh, that's looking pretty good. Let's go over to the side view and we'll line this up with the floor. And that's looking pretty good. Now with that, let's go ahead and uh, let's do a quick subtraction. So we'll click subtract. Let's go back into perspective view and into lit mode. And we don't see a hallway. Well, something seems to have gone wrong. So let's take a look over here. Well, we can't see through our brushes. So let's maybe add a light. Ah, we have some sort of a strange wall that's blocking us off from our corridor. Logan, you want to tell everybody what just happened? Well, what we can do is take a look from the top view and zoom way in on both of those brushes. Because what's happening is, since the brushes weren't snapped together, what happened is, with a little bit of placement error, we left a gap in between the two brushes. Uh, this gap is, of course, picked up when we build, so we have actual space in between them, and therefore we have not connected these brushes, and we don't have a visible hallway. That's right. That gap is going to be a thin wall of solid mass. And the problem is, here, a miss is as good as a mile. Even though it's thin, that doesn't mean that you can get through it in any way. So these two rooms are effectively sealed off. In fact, that's what they are. It's no longer a corridor coming off of a room, it's actually two entirely separate rooms. But don't worry, all is not lost. You can fix this. First, let's get the red builder brush out of the way. And then because we now realize we should, probably should have had it on uh, from the beginning, let's turn the drag grid back on. We'll go over to view, drag grid, use drag grid, or of course you could use the checkbox if you can uh, see it down in the lower right hand corner of your screen. We can't because we're recording at a uh, resolution of 1024. So I'll select this brush that uh, we tried to add, and what I need to do is get this snapped back to the grid. This is really easy. All you need to do is right-click on any one corner of the brush, and boom, it'll snap it right back to the grid. In fact, you can jump over to the front or side view and verify that it's also snapped in this direction as well, so it's snapped right to the floor. The key here is notice as we zoom in, no matter how close we get, till we get as close as we possibly can, we're still perfectly aligned, and that means we have no gaps. So we'll come back over to perspective view, and we'll jump back into lit mode. And now we should see a hallway, and we don't. Why don't we? Well, we haven't rebuilt yet. We need to rebuild geometry. That's right. Let's recalculate our geometry and give it just a moment. We'll close out our error window, and there we go. We now have a nice hallway coming off of our, uh, our room. Now, important to keep in mind that the only reason we're able to do this quickly and easily is because, because of the drag grid and using proper snapping. When you are placing BSP brushes, it is crucial that you are snapping. Now, what may not seem as crucial, but uh, really is, is going to be the placement of static meshes. So let's talk a little bit about that. First off, I'm going to create a new subtractive level altogether. So let's just go to File, New, and this will be Subtractive. And uh, no, I don't want to save changes. And we're going to make this room a little bit bigger for this particular example. Let's say maybe 2048 by 2048 by 512. We'll build and close, and we'll go ahead and subtract this out. I'll hold down L, and we'll place a light right in the middle of the room. And you'll notice the light doesn't quite make it out to the walls. I'm going to fix that by pressing F4 and going into the light's properties. Make sure that you, ex you know, I'll close everything up so you can see where we go. Let's expand the light category, expand light component properties. And we're going to take the radius property, and we'll set that to 2048, which should make sure that we're lighting up the entire room now with our single light. 
Okay, now what I want to do is talk about the importance of snapping static meshes. This won't always be absolutely critical, but you're going to find that a lot of the static meshes that you use for uh, repeating kinds of things, things like walkways, railways, uh, some supports that you'll be putting together, they're built to snap together. And so you need to make sure that you're using proper snapping, and it'll make your design process not only easier, but a whole lot faster. So for demonstration, I'm going to grab several different meshes. I'm going to open up the generic browser, and I already have a package loaded in called LT Floors, and we're going to grab a whole lot of meshes out of here. So let's start down uh, near the very bottom of our list. I'm going to grab, uh, let's see, uh, LT Floors SM uh, Walk Pipe 2. So we'll right click, add actor, and place that in the, into the map. Uh, let's grab Walk Pipe 6. We'll go add actor, and we'll place that as well. Uh, let's maybe come over here to uh, walk pipe 10, and we'll place that. Notice I'm not really worried about where they're going. I'm going to position them here in just a moment. And let's get the T intersection, which is going to be walk pipe 7. So we'll place that over here as well. Okay, so I have four separate static meshes. And using just these four meshes, I want to create a, an interconnected walkway system that has a T junction at one bit and then goes out to corners at the edges. Now, again, just to drive the example home like I was doing earlier, we'll go over to View and begin by turning off the drag grid. And we'll try to do this by hand for starters. So we'll take our corner. Let's move it kind of out of the way. We'll just slide it over here. Let's take our T intersection, and we'll go to a top viewport and into brush wire frame mode. And we'll move this over toward the center of the map. Okay, looking pretty good so far. And now let's take our, uh, our little straight piece, and we can, we can join that up. Now, let's say we learned something from our experience with BSP brushes, and we know that we need to make sure that they're lined up really, really closely. Well, we can zoom in really close, and this is as far as we can possibly go. And now we can position these really carefully. I don't think that's actually perfect. Maybe right about here, and you see it's real easy to overlap, and this would be tedious. If you had to line up every single static mesh like this, this would take days to do even the simplest of networks. Much faster and much easier if you use snapping, but right now we currently have a problem. If I come over to view and turn the drag grid back on, we're currently off the drag grid. So if I select maybe uh, this corner piece or this four-way piece, and try to move it, you'll notice that its pivot point is not falling right on the grid. Right, it, it is in fact snapping. As you move it around, you can see the, uh, the snap points, but every time it snaps, it's still misaligned by the same amount that it was originally. That's right, and that's going to be a real problem as I try to take other meshes and align them to this. So if we maybe take this guy and move him down, we just can't get perfect alignment. Fortunately, there's a way we can fix this. You can select any static mesh, right-click on it, and in the right-click menu, you'll see a line. From that, you can choose Move Actors to Grid, and that'll move its pivot point to the nearest point on the grid. So now everything is aligned, and now when we snap, we're moving right along the grid, which is great for us. Now, another point. With a grid setting of 32, which is that, no, we're, I'm sorry, we're using 16. With a grid setting of 16, we can zoom out to a certain point, but once we get like to a bird's eye view where we can see our entire level, you'll notice it's almost as if we have no snapping. Right, or at the very least it gets very tedious because you can't eyeball and tell what grid line you're on. As you're, you're moving in between the visual grid lines. You're still on a grid of 16, you're just so far away that you can no longer see lines in increments of 16. That's right, and it would be nice if we didn't have to zoom all the way in. It'd be really cool if we could arrange our entire network of walkways with a view that encompassed the whole room. Room. We can do that by lowering our drag grid, or I guess technically increasing it. Let's push it all the way up to 64. And if we take a look mentally, you can see that this portion of the walkway is four grid units across, which is going to work out great for us. We could probably go even lower, but I think I'll leave it at 64. However, you'll also notice that we're currently no longer aligned with the grid. So we need to right-click on this mesh yet again, go over to Align, and choose Move Actors to Grid, and now everything lines up. If we take our little straight mesh over here and do the same thing, right-click, align, move actors to grid, he actually snaps right where he needs to be. These two actors are perfectly snapped together. Now let's uh, align everybody, and we'll start to create a network. So we'll right-click, choose align, move actors to grid like so, and this guy's a little bit off, but that's okay. He's not really positioned yet anyway. And let's do it with this last mesh as well. And we could do it with everybody at once, but now you've seen how to do it several times, so there should be no forgetting at this point. Now, 
our grid is so large that we can actually create our network without having to be up close to anything. So really quickly, I can tap the uh, space bar to grab my rotation widget. We can rotate this 90 degrees like so. And then just very quickly and easily, we can move our mesh right where it needs to be to snap together. And those two uh, objects are now perfectly aligned. We don't even really need to zoom in and check. Let's go ahead and select uh, both of the meshes by holding control and just clicking on both of them. I'll tap the space bar again to go to the rotation widget. And I, I didn't mean to rotate them. Let's hold down Alt and then rotate them 90 degrees so that makes a duplicate, like so. I'll tap space bar again a couple of times to get the, the translation widget back out. And really quickly, we've got another section. Now let's hold down control and select all four of these meshes at once. I'll tap the space bar again. We'll hold down Alt and I'll rotate everybody 180 degrees, tap spacebar two more times, and we can very quickly move all of these meshes over. And you can see how snapping has accelerated this process dramatically, so that we no longer have to really zoom in and check everything out. Now, the, there's one more thing I really want to demonstrate. I could, of course, call the, uh, the demonstration over here, but what if snapping just won't solve your problem? And we're actually about to run into that. Let's uh, take this corner piece, and I'll move it out of the way for just a moment. We'll take our two straight pieces here and here. I'm going to hold down Alt, and we'll drag those out like so. And then we'll... Dr I'm sorry. Now, when I drag those out, I was holding the Alt key. As you can see, I was... Right, you just repeated the process over here. Hold Alt again. So release Alt, hold Alt, and drag out a second pair. That's right. Now, once, one more time. Hold down Alt and drag to the right. Let go of Alt. Hold it back down. And now drag off to the left. And really, all we're missing at this point are these corner sections. But we're going to run into a very interesting problem. As I move this first corner piece into position, we'll notice that things don't really line up. First off... We can't snap this exactly where it needs to go, so we need to change the resolution of our drag grid and bring it down a little bit. Well, that's no problem. Let's go to View, Drag Grid, pull this down to 32, and now we can put it right where it needs to be. But, look at this. Our little straight walkways overlap, and that's a problem. And there's a way that we can fix this. Logan, you want to share with us what that is? Well, we need to adjust the scale of this. Piece. If we change the scale, we could change it so that it lines up. Just for a quick demonstration, you could grab the draw scale 3D and change the Y because looking at the manipulator, you're currently in uh, local space. That's so right. we're looking down the Y axis of the mesh. So if we adjusted the Y axis scale using the draw scale 3D, like just try 0.5, just some really easy numbers, we can see that we can indeed change the size of the mesh. Now, you now could, I was going to say, you could do this uh, just kind of eyeball it. You could say, well, 0.5 doesn't work. 0.6 maybe, 0.7, and you can proceed to just count your way up until you realize that maybe 0.9 didn't quite work. So now you'd have to do 0.95, see if that worked. But this would be a very tedious and time-consuming process. And really, there's a way that we can find the scale number without having to do any trial and error. Um, this is going to involve using the measure tool, because if you look between the T-junction and the curved mesh, you can see a number of grid units. And either you could count those and multiply those by your grid settings, or use the measure tool. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll move our mesh completely out of the way. Right, just to drive this point home. That's right. I'm going to drag with the middle mouse button, and that's going to create a little tiny measure tool. Now, notice this measure tool snaps to grid points, which is really handy in this case. And we have exactly 224 units from one static mesh to the next. And let's, uh, let's also measure the mesh itself. If you don't mind, set the draw scale back to 1. Sure thing. So we get an idea of what was the original size of this mesh. So from and one end of it to the next, we might need to actually... Ch no, it looks like it's still on grid snap uh, settings. So, boom, it goes to 256. So there's our problem. We're trying to fit a mesh of size 256 into a space of t size 224. What we could do is we could find the ratio between these two and use that as our scale. That's right. What if we divided 224 by 256? Well, it looks like the answer was already up there, but let's go ahead and do it here. We'll do 224 divided by 256, press equals, and we get 0.875. If we scale this mesh down to 0.875 in the y-axis, we should have a perfect fit. Let's test it out. So over here in y, we'll set 0.875, press enter. And look at that. And perfect. we'll... It is exactly perfect. Let's slide it up into position, and we get exact alignment. That's exactly what we needed. Now, we could go ahead and do this with all of our remaining meshes, but it would probably be easier if we just replaced them. So what I'm going to do is take all of these meshes that are coming off of our T-junctions... And we'll delete them for now. Even better, maybe grab um, 
duplicate the first one, get a, get one corner going, and then duplicate yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. So let's just uh, hold down the Alt key, and we'll duplicate this guy who's already been uh, aligned properly. I'll tap the space bar once to grab the rotation widget, and we'll rotate this guy 90 degrees. Tap two more times to go back to translation and fit him. Notice he also fits in perfectly. Now the cool thing is that we can hold down Control and select all three of these meshes, and this allows us to show one more thing, too. Uh, if I can get an idea of right where the center of this is, I can right-click, and we can go to pivot and choose move here snapped. So boom. That might actually select the mesh, but of course you could just control deselect it and then be ready to go. Yeah, it looks like that. Maybe if I snap, I just right click right off of the mesh, because it looks like right clicking on the mesh was a problem there. Let's go to move here snapped, and there we go. I've moved the pivot of these three meshes here into the center of our little network, and make sure that center piece isn't selected. Now, if I go over to the rotation widget by tapping the space bar, we can hold down Alt, and I'm going to just drag. Ah, oh, it snapped over. Okay, I thought I was going to get fancy, but that's all right. Sure, yeah, it's trying to think just a little bit far ahead there. Yeah, but that's yeah. okay. But we can just move this really quickly into place because those snap settings are so low. Right, nonetheless, even even at 32, we can still eyeball everything even from this distance. So that's, it's that's right. So let's go ahead and hit Control, and we'll select all of these meshes at the same time. We'll hold down Alt and just drag these up. Now let's uh, rotate again. This time we'll go 180 degrees. Tap spacebar two more times and get this positioned. And there we go. We have a perfectly aligned network of static meshes. Let's go ahead and view this over in perspective, and we'll go back over to lit mode. And here they all are. Nicely aligned to one another, very quickly and easily, all through the power of snapping. So just make sure that by the end of this lesson, you understand snapping. Now, there's some other types of snapping, too, that are available to you. We have uh, rotational snapping, which is going to be important if you're going to try to get objects to line back up after you've rotated them. And if we go over to view, you can see that this has different settings. So the rotation grid can snap to 2 degrees, 5 degrees, 22, 45, and 90. You also have scale snapping, which will snap in percentages. And these are all going to be very very helpful, but I think really the most important one that you're going to find as you're building levels is going to be this drag grid. And don't be afraid to change this number a lot based on what you're doing. Especially if you always remember that you can always go to a line and snap something back to the grid. So you, nothing hurts even to shake it all the way down to one. Granted, one will be a little bit tedious at that point, but still aligned nonetheless. Yeah. And of course, if you decide that you would rather bring the size back up, you can always snap back to a larger grid size. That's right. And just as a, a kind of a tip on the side, I almost never really have to take my drag grid and turn it off. In most cases, you're going to find that setting it all the way down to one will solve your problem, and I don't really recommend that you turn the drag grid off. And the uh, objects in your level that don't need to snap will already be set not to respect the drag grid. For example, you'll notice that lights don't snap, so you can place those wherever you want. There's going to be some other pickups that will behave the same way. But really, that's everything that I wanted to share with you about snapping, and that's going to wrap things up for this lesson. Thanks a lot.